Hi, today we are considering a very important topic, those of which, those of which, who is repenting, needs deliverance. A lot of people are in bondage, even in Christianity, and it is very, very important for us to treat this topic because not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will definitely enter the kingdom of God, but only those who serve God in spirit and in truth and do the will of the Father that we enter the kingdom. A lot of people are in Christianity, but the truth is that they are not saved. But because of so many false teachings, heresies, they believe that they are saved. But the truth is that it is going to be very, very shocking on the last day for these people. Before we continue, I have to make us understand this truth. My ministry, the calling of God upon my life, is not the call to sentence people to death or condemn people, but to let people know the truth and also show them the way out of the darkness they find themselves. We know that in Exodus chapter 22 verse 18, the Bible makes it very clear that thou shalt not suffer a witch to live, which is were sentenced to death. They, it was something that God hated. It was a very uh, abhorrent thing for someone to be a witch in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, the Bible does not say witches and wizards should be killed. Rather, they are given the opportunity to repent and pass through deliverance. We are going to learn some things today if people who were possessed, who were in witchcraft, who have now come to believe the Lord and accept the gospel, do they need deliverance? Now, before I answer this question, I want to tell you that the Lord has used me to conduct deliverance for some persons even before I became a man in my youthful age i ran into some kind of situation and i saw people who were being tormented by evil spirits and i out of zeal i used my faith even though i had no experience no training but by the special grace of god i had results people were delivered and it is a burden in my heart seeing a lot of people who are in the cage of witch, uh, witchcraft and they believe that they are saved when the Bible makes it very clear that nobody who practices witchcraft will enter the kingdom of God. But it has come to a point that so many people even now believe that you can be a Christian witch. There is nothing like a Christian witch. I am going to do a teaching specifically on that, but today we are looking at this topic. Does a witch who is repenting needs deliverance? When I say anytime I say witch, it could be a wizard or a witch. A witch is a female witch, with some, a female that is practicing witchcraft or that is possessed with the spirit of witchcraft, while a wizard is a male that is practicing witchcraft or that is possessed with the spirit of witchcraft. Now, let us do a little bit of study before I answer this question. The word witchcraft is transliterated to uh, read kesem. It means divination, it means witchcraft. In Exodus chapter 22 verse 18, God gave a command that all witches should be killed. Now, if in the Old Testament, if God, if God hated witchcraft, why do we feel that witches shouldn't pass through deliverance? I listened to a man of God who was teaching and he said, if you are a witch, uh, once you accept the Lord into your life, you are already delivered. And he was quoting a lot of scriptures he said, in Christianity today, we no longer need 
deliverance, that deliverance shouldn't be conducted anymore, that once you believe in the Lord, once you come to accept the gospel, you are already delivered. But as we journey in course of this study today, we will know that uh, it is actually a wrong teaching, it is heresy. What exactly uh, is what exactly uh, does witchcraft entail? What are the practices in witchcraft? Now, these are some of the things that witches practice. And when we look at these things, you will know the depth of witchcraft. I am not going to explain, but because of time. Witches and wizards, they are involved in spell casting, divination, in bewitchment, in necromancy, in soothsaying, in medium, in sorcery, in spiritism, they are involved in demonology, they are involved in black magic. Now, all these things I mentioned now, none of them is inspired by the Holy Spirit. Witchcraft is a cult. It is a spiritual cult. There is a physical part of it, physical cult or part of it, that um, whereby witches and wizards could gather and make their practices, cast spells, do whatever thing they want to do, and even engage in sexual orgies. That is a physical uh, cult part of it. But the truth is that witchcraft is a cult, and I I term it a spiritual cult uh, because. Uh, they have a way of identifying with themselves, but that's not what we are talking about today. I have conducted deliverance for a lot of people who were possessed in witchcraft. Some of them, I begged them to repent, but for one reason or the other, they gave a lot of excuses. In fact, there was this young girl of about eight years old who told me that Oh, I don't. I, I don't actually like like witchcraft. I want to come at bed. I don't want to lose my sight. I said, "Why do you need the sight?" She told me that in case somebody wants to poison food for me, if I have my witchcraft powers, I could see the food and know that yes, there is poison in this food, so I don't need to eat it. So I want to retain my sight. If possible, take away the spirit, cast the spirit out, but I want to retain my sight. That was a girl of about eight years old, uh, over 10 years ago, uh, about 13 years now, uh, that I encountered that person. They have pleaded with a lot of witches and wizards, come out of this practice, give your life to Christ, the Lord will deliver you. The deliverance is not going to be more than one day. The Spirit will leave you. Just a session of prayer is going to leave you. If you are serious, it doesn't take time. The Spirit will leave you. You just need to open up your heart and give your life to Jesus Christ. Uh, repent and God will cast the Spirit out of you. It is not me, but the power of God, in the name of Jesus, we cast the Spirit out, but a lot of them will say, they will give excuses. Majority of them will even deny having anything to do with witchcraft. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, the Bible says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you. We are bodies. This very body you see, this physical body, is the temple of the living God. It is where the Spirit of God dwells. And the truth is the human body can never be empty. Originally, when God created man in the Garden of Eden, in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, God breathed into the nursery of man the breath of life, and man became a living soul. The body of man is designed in a way to be occupied by the Spirit of God. And when the Spirit of God is not there, Satan tries to infiltrate the body. In Matthew chapter 12, 43 to 45, we see the 
uh, teaching of Jesus. Let me just read. When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places, seeking rest and findeth and, and find none. Then he said, I will return to my into my house from whence I came out. And when he is come and he findeth it empty, swept and garnished. Now, it says empty. That means when it is no longer there. The human body can never be empty. It is either the spirit of God is there or the spirit of the devil lives in it. It is designed, it was built and created in a way that the spirit of God lives there originally. It is occupied by the spirit of God. The spirit of God lives inside of us. We are the temple of God. But for one reason or the other, if the body is desecrated, the spirit of God leaves the body and then evil spirits go in and stay. Now, if the spirits are cast out and then the human whose body uh, is freed of evil spirits now do things that makes the, uh, make the spirit of God go out, at, at the point, the body is considered as empty and swept clean. And then what happened when the body is empty, swept and garnished, the, the spirit goeth and taketh with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter, they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. Even so shall it be also unto this wicked generation. These are the very words of Jesus when he was doing teaching in Matthew chapter 12. Now listen. Witchcraft is a spirit. And anybody that is possessed by the spirit of witchcraft needs to be delivered. Jesus Christ tells us in Mark chapter 16 verse 17 that he says, he says, And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall cast out evil spirits. So if Christians are given the authority, the power to cast out evil spirits, and the spirit of witchcraft is an evil spirit, why do you think that those who are repenting do not need deliverance? I don't want to call anybody's name, but there are men of God, men of God in quote. I know they are not men of God because if they are men of God, they should do the will of God and preach the truth and not well, make people live in lukewarmness. They are neither hot nor cold. They are not here. They are not there. They are serving two masters at the same time and believing that they are saved. This is a lie and teachings from the pit of hell. Our body is a temple of God. Our body is where the Holy Spirit dwells. So God is jealous. He doesn't want any other spirit to live in our body. So if you are possessed with the spirit of witchcraft and you want to be a Christian or you've already accepted Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, you need to come out of that kingdom of darkness. There are just two types of spirits in the world the spirit of god and the spirit of the devil the spirit of god is the spirit of light the spirit of the devil is the spirit of darkness you can't harbor your body cannot harbor the spirit of god and the spirit of satan in one body at the same time second corinthians chapter 6 chapter 6 verse 16 says and what agreement had the temple of god with idols for Ye are the temple of the living God, as God had said, I will dwell in them. I, God, will dwell in them and walk in them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. In Matthew chapter 6, verse 24, Jesus Christ says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or 
else. He will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot save God and mammon. You can save God and mammon. You can be a witch and be a Christian at the same time. God is very, very jealous. He said, I am a jealous God. He doesn't even want us to bow, just to give a little bow to an idol. How much more allowing an evil spirit to live inside of us. Some of these people who are giving these teachings have been deceived and they are possessed with demonic spirits. Some of them are direct agents from the pit of hell. There are different kinds of false prophets and false teachers. There are some heretics who are giving out these false teachings out of ignorance. There are some who are doing it because of money. They know the truth, but they don't want people to restrain from giving to them. I know that if you want to speak the truth today, a lot of people will hate you, even so-called, many of so-called Christians will hate you and their mind is, oh, I don't need to give to this man, I don't need to give to this pastor, he's teaching uh, doctrines that are too difficult for us to follow. So let him even run out of cash and let him, let him and his ministry perish because we don't want to listen to this. Um, so because of reactions like that, there are people who teach false doctrines. They tell people what they want to hear. And you know, when you tickle people's uh, ears, and when you uh, tickle their ears, they, their pockets will, the coins in their pockets will jump out. That is the truth, and it will jump into the offering bowl. So, because of that, a lot of people are choosing to uh, be false teachers. There are others too who do this because they want to carve out a name for themselves. They want followers, so they just do these things because they want to. They want to attract attention. They want people to follow them. They don't actually know what they are doing. They are playing with the souls of men, but they don't actually know the extent of damage they are doing to the kingdom of Jesus Christ. There are this set of people who are demonically possessed. They are possessed and it is the spirits, the evil spirits in them that are actually moving them to give this kind of uh, false teachings that you don't need deliverance. There are others who are direct agents of darkness these people some of them are not even real human beings some of them are uh, human beings who became possessed and initiated and we are sent into this world to do evils and destroy christianity and cause a lot of people to uh, go astray but there are others and there are others too who are pure agents of darkness from the marine kingdom from the pit of hell who some of them even have bible schools some of them are pastors have mega churches and they are teaching people all sort of things i know a man of god in nigeria i i, I used to watch him not because i believed in him i knew he was a false prophet then i used to watch him and when i was listening to him I, not because I, I needed his teachings, but because I wanted to see how he was actually operating. There were times somebody could say, oh, I'm a witch, I'm a wizard, I have killed, I've destroyed this. And you could just look at the person and say, oh, you are not a witch, you are not possessed. He, he did that a lot of times when I watched his cable television. A lot of people are going there. You could even get initiated right there into... What some of these men of God do, some of these false prophets, um, what they do is that when you go, if you are possessed and you go there, I tell you the truth, they will push you inside more. You could go there and not be able to speak again. About six years ago, I met a lady. She went there and after she returned from there, the problem became worse. I was asking her that she was possessed. Uh, I was asking her if she was possessed and she told me no and I said okay you said Lord Jesus Christ
come into my heart. She couldn't say, I said, you are a communicant. If you say you are not possessed with demonic spirits, say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. She refused to say it, but I asked her a lot of times, are you not possessed? Is there no evil spirit in you? She said, never. She denied. And I told her, but the Lord opened my eyes and I saw snakes around you, serpents around you. By the time I, I, I pressurized her, I pushed her because I didn't actually want her to get lost. It was then she opened up to me that actually she was possessed and she was going from place to place looking for deliverance. And then from the moment she went there and returned, she, her heart became hardened and dull towards the truth. She never made any attempt to go for deliverance again. And I told her, you were pushed inside more. Your heart is like you were just warm, but now you are finally cold. That is what some people do. Let me just even mention this. There was a little girl I conducted deliverance for who went to worry for holiday. And then I conducted deliverance for her and I gave her my phone number when she was going back. And I told her, if you have any challenge, call me and I'm going to um, talk to you. Uh, I will call you back. Just call me and tell me your name and I'm going to call you back. And she told me when she finally called me that when she got home, small girl less than 10 years old she told me that the stepfather who was a pastor asked her oh as usual uh, when last did you go to the coven when last did you uh, go to meetings in the coven and was asking her this question and she said oh there was this brother who prayed for me and since then I have not been going to covens, I have not been going to meetings. And he said, oh, why are you not going? You must go. And she said, he held her eyes like this. You must go, you must go, you must go, you must go. That day was Thursday. This man initiated her back into the kingdom of darkness and shockingly, she found herself in a coven, in another coven entirely that night. And it was a coven that belonged to this so-called pastor. And she said there were all famous in the coven that it was this man who called himself a pastor that was the only male there. This was 2007. There are so many things happening in Christianity, in the kind of, in the Christianity of today. A lot of corruption. Christianity has become so corrupt that so many people are now using the name of church to take people, gullible people and weak people. It's, it's an opportunity for them to push them into the kingdom of darkness. These are like the Pharisees, like the scribes and the Pharisees who do not want to enter the kingdom and they do not want anybody to enter the kingdom of God. Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, because you have condemned yourself already. The Bible says that there shall be joy in heaven over a single soul that repents. The heart of God bleeds in heaven over any child of God that you deceive, any single one that you make to stumble. But you know what? The judgment is, Jesus Christ said, the things that cause offense must surely come. But woe to him through whom these things come. It is better that a millstone be tied around that person's neck and be thrown into the sea. That is the judgment. If you cause any little of these ones to fall into temptation of wrong teachings and you cause them to get destroyed you are going to give account of every single soul that you deceive let's come back to this teaching in mark chapter 16 verse 17 jesus christ says these signs shall follow them that believe that in my name they shall cast out demons 
You should cast out devils. So if you are possessed with the spirit of witchcraft, the spirit of God is not going to strive with that evil spirit in you. You have to submit. You have to submit yourself and ask the Lord to cast the spirit out of you. You need to go through deliverance. If you hide it from the Lord in hell, you are not going to hide it. Let me tell you one thing. In the fire of hell, when people spend minutes and hours confessing their sins and asking God, God, I want to repent. God, I used to be a witch. I used to be a wizard. I killed people. I bewitched people. I, I was casting spell. God, I, 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 I did a lot of things. I used to be a criminal. When you confess these things and you discover that it is over, you are going to turn against God and call God a wicked God. You're going to call, you're going to blaspheme the name of the Lord. But you know what? God's ears will be shut against your blasphemies. And it is not an experience that anybody should face, to have. I've seen a lot of Christians who are so dedicated to the work of God. If they say, bring money, they bring money. If they say, uh, we are going for evangelism. They are there. They are sacrificing so much. But they haven't repented of their witchcraft. They haven't repented of their sorceries. Some of them even use the power of these spirits to protect themselves. So, so it is very, very painful that a lot of people are serving God kind of faithfully. They are doing so much in the kingdom, but they are going to end up in hell. Why? Because they decide to hide that part of their lives. They don't want any kind of shame. People have so much criminalized, criminalized witchcraft. Some years ago, uh, a, a pastor was telling me that, oh, no witch can repent. Witches need to die. They should kill all of them. Witches should die. They should starve to death. And I said, why don't you just allow me pray for this little boy? He didn't buy the witchcraft in the in market. He was poisoned by this. An enemy did this. Allow me to pray for this little boy. He said, no, it means, do you know what it means to be a witch? It means you have to, to conduct deliverance for him. You have to remove the blood, all the blood from him. Because witches cannot repent. But it is a big lie. Who said that the power of God can never cast out witchcraft? Spirit from someone. A lot of people have repented. And I don't know why people feel that which is deserve to die. They don't deserve to die, except they choose to die. Why would they die when the power of God is available to set them free? They don't need to die. Let them come out of their evil ways. And the Lord that is full of mercy, we have mercy upon them. It doesn't matter if they have killed a million people or they have done so many havocs. Everybody deserves mercy. Which is deserve the mercy of God. Why should I say that some persons don't deserve the mercy of God? God's mercy is for everybody. It's for the criminal, it's for the lesbians, it's for the gay, it's for the adulterer, it's for the adulteresses. Let me tell you, you don't deserve the fire of hell. If God is calling you today that come out of witchcraft, what stops you from coming out? Are you ashamed in hell? There won't be shame. On earth, yeah, you can be ashamed of your sins. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature, all things have passed away, behold, all things have become new. In fact, when people come up to me and say, I'm an adulterer, I want to repent. I'm a criminal, I'm a witch, I want to repent. I, there is this thing, there is this force in my heart that puts them close to me. I just love them. 
Anytime somebody walks up to me and say, I'm a cultist, I want to give my life to Christ, and I see genuineness in their eyes, I love them. And I realize why Jesus used to eat with sinners and dine with them, with, with, with prostitutes. He was their friend. Because he wanted them to be saved. He used to come down to their level, not to participate in the evil acts with them, but to show them love in their sin, in their sinful ways and tell them that you don't deserve this condemnation and I do not condemn you go home and see no more that was a lifestyle of Jesus's ministry he was he, he used to go he used to go to the point of even relating with sinners and the scribes and the Pharisees the religious leaders were very very disturbed they said if you are a child of God if you are the son of God why would you be a friend of sinners? But he wasn't a friend of sinners because he loves sin. But because he loves sinners, he wanted sinners to participate in the in in the in the receiving of God's mercy. He said he came for sinners to be saved. He didn't come for the righteous. So if Jesus actually came to die for sinners, just as he said that it is the sick that needs a physician, those who are well, they don't need a doctor. The truth is that you are which you need a doctor. You need Dr. Jesus. You need him. Don't say that, oh, my sins are too much. Oh, I've done so many evil things. I can't be saved. I can tell you the truth. I know people who were once witches and wizards who got saved and the Lord is using some of them. You can't continue to live that life of sin. You can go to the coven and kill people. Let me ask you a question. If you are a witch or you are a wizard, are there no times that you actually have in mind to do one thing? but you see yourself doing another thing. I have seen witches and wizards confessing that, oh, I killed, it wasn't actually my intention, but I, it, I unintentionally did it. In fact, there was this lady I conducted deliverance for some years ago, and she said that they told her to bring her mother's business, and she said, no, I can bring my mother's business, uh, because my mother is the one fended for us, so uh, why should I do that? And she said, they, by their manipulations, they invoked the mother's business to the coven and they kept it somewhere. And it was like a broom. They said, then I told her, give us that broom. She picked it and handed it over to them. She never knew that they invoked the mother's business to the coven, invoked it into a broom, and asked her to give them the broom. So she picked the broom, gave them the broom, and she gave the mother's business out. If you are a witch or a wizard, are there not times that you never actually had the intention of doing evil, but the spirit moved you to do evil? Let me tell you one big truth. Why all witches and wizards who refuse to repent we go to hell? It is the spirit in a man that controls the man. If the spirit of witchcraft is in you and is controlling you, you have no place in the kingdom of God. It is only those who are led by the spirit of God, according to John chapter 4, verse 23 and verse 24. Let me read it for you. But ye, but the hour cometh, and now is when the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father, for the Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is spirit, and they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. If you are not worshiping God in the spirit of God, in spirit, according to the spirit of truth, you have no place in the kingdom of God. You can't be led by an evil spirit on earth 
and you expect God to open heaven for you. It is life from the pit of hell. Romans chapter 8 verse 9 says, But ye are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the spirit of Christ, he is none of his. If any man has not the spirit of Christ, if the spirit of God is not living in you, if the spirit of Christ is not living in you, you are none of his. Some of those who call themselves Christian witches and wizards because they have a dream or maybe they get a message from God once in a while, they feel that God accepts them. No, God can give somebody that is a witch a message. God can give somebody that is a witch that is going to church a dream. That doesn't mean that God accepts that spirit in you. He is only telling you that I do not cast you away. I am interested in you. He could tell you, don't travel today. Uh, there is accident on the way. Don't do this. Don't do that. That doesn't mean that he accepts that spirit that is evil that is living in you. We have to understand that the mercy of God is what makes him to relate with us, even in our weakness. Remember why we were yet sinners. Christ died for us that we may be saved. The fact that he, has, he comes to you to say, this is going to happen, don't do this, don't do that. Or go and tell so so sister this, go and tell that brother this. The fact that he sends you a message doesn't mean that he will open heaven for you. Have you not heard that Jesus Christ said that it is not him who says, Lord, Lord, that we enter the kingdom of God. That even on the judgment day, a lot of people who did the work of iniquity will say, Lord, I prophesied in your name. I cast out devils in your name. Why would the Lord reject these people? Because even as you are doing this, the Lord still wants you to walk on your weakness. The fact that you tell lies does not mean that God is going to stop using you. But even as he, starts, he, as he continues to use you, he wants you to repent of telling lies. I say it, me, I repent every day. If I see that, if I open the word of God and I see that, oh, this thing is wrong, the more I go closer to God, the more I see my weakness and the more I repent. The fact that God speaks through me, the fact that God uses me to preach doesn't mean that I don't have weaknesses to deal with. This is where some men of God gets it wrong. They capitalize on, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Do not judge. And they fail to deal with their lusts. They fail to deal with their uh, life of adultery. They fail to do with the life of lies. They fail to do with laziness. They fail to do with dirtiness. I preached a message that I put on Eagle Eye Opener. I think I titled the message, um, Ministers of God's Spiritual Gifts and uh, Self-Control. Some ministers of God feel that so long as God is using me, I don't need to work on myself. No, the more you come closer to the light, who is Jesus Christ, the more you see clear. You see clearly. You see clearer. Your, your vision becomes clearer. And the clearer you see, the more you see that there could be some stains in your body. And there is need to remove those stains. There is nothing like, oh, I have arrived, I am all righteous. No. So, if you are possessed with any kind of spirit, I'm talking about witchcraft, but there are many types of witchcraft. There are marine witches, there are different kinds of witchcraft, what people even call white, witch, white witchcraft. There is nothing as good witchcraft. Every witchcraft spirit is evil so long as it is not a holy spirit it is evil and you need to repent of it i know this message is going to offend some people in fact when some people hear this kind of message they say who is this personally personally 
I can't stop speaking the truth. I can't stop telling the truth. Because somebody wants to fight me. There are many men of God who, does, who don't want to address the issue of witchcraft and spiritual possession because they feel if they uh, say anything about it, they will get attacked. I tell you the bitter truth. If you do not repent of your witchcraft, you have no place in the kingdom of God. Forget about all those lies they tell you. If I, there was a day... <clears throat> There was a day a man of God was saying, forget about witchcraft, whether you are a witch or not, the Lord accepts you. I looked at him and I said, if you fail to repent, you and those you are deceiving, every single one of you will end up in hell. I'm not judging anybody. The Bible makes it very, very clear that the effeminate, the sorcerers will never, no witch, we enter the kingdom of God. Let's stop being deceived. There are some people, you know, you are a witch, you are a wizard, you go to some prophets, they tell you, oh, they tell you good things. They tell you those who are planning evil against you, but they will never tell you to repent. Not even once, not in a direct way, not in an indirect way, they don't tell you to repent. And you are happy. Don't get deceived. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. It is because of these very things that the wrath of God, the judgment of God is coming upon the children of disobedience. So if you feel you don't need to repent, if you feel the Lord accepts you the way you are and you don't need repentance, you are in church, you don't want to repent, you are on the broad way. And the, the broad way is leading to destruction. The narrow way will never contain anybody that has carried the cross of Christ yet still belongs to witchcraft covens. It's the, the narrow way will never contain you. If you are possessed, please give your life to Jesus Christ. The Lord is calling every one of us to repentance. Me, I look at my life daily. I ask myself, Hosanna, if the Lord returns now, are you rapture worthy? Will you rapture with Him? If I look at myself, let me tell you, if you are saved, you will know. If you are saved at any particular time, you are under grace, you will know that you are saved. The Spirit of God in you, the Bible says that the Spirit of God beareth witness we are, with our spirits that we are children of God. The Spirit of God, each time you ask yourself that question, the Spirit of God will bear witness with your spirit that you are saved. But mind you, you have to be saved first. If you are not saved, uh, you could have a false hope. Because there are people who believe that they are saved and we know they are not saved because they are, by their fruits the Bible says we shall know them. If you are saved, if you are a child of God, you will bear the fruit of the kingdom. If you are not bearing the fruit of the kingdom, it is a very pure and clear truth that a bad tree can never be, can never bear good fruits and a good tree can never bear bad fruits. By their fruits you shall know them. Please, this is a teaching, but it is also a preaching. I want to plead with every one of you, if there is an evil spirit in you, please cry to the Lord. Tell the Lord, Lord, I don't need the spirit. Let me tell you, you have the right to ask the Spirit of God to come into your heart. And you have the right to ask the Spirit of God to go out of your life. You have the right also to ask an evil spirit to come into your life. You also have the right to ask an evil spirit to leave you. And they will leave you alone if you feel you need assistance. This is why I am here. I have never come online to preach myself or to tell you good things about myself and tell you that uh, I need money, that I want to be rich, you should sow seeds. I have never come online to tell you to sow seeds. I am here to do the work of my father. I am here 
to help our fellow brethren, not to enrich myself. This is why I am here. Why am I telling you this? If you need help, I am here to help you. I'll pray with you. I will counsel you. You don't need to pay any money. And your secrets are sealed. But so I don't keep anybody's secrets. So, sometimes so people call me and they say, Oh, I was the one that called you that time. So you mean you are not praying for me? Why? Why is it that you are asking me that you don't recognize me? Let me tell you. I have a lot of people reaching me and I don't save people's information. I don't have anything I'm doing with your information. In fact, uh, a lot of people become embarrassed when I tell them, please, I can't remember what we discussed earlier. They feel embarrassed. And I plead with them that, please, listen. A lot of people contact me and I don't, I don't write people's information down. I don't save people's email. I delete them. When I talk to people, I don't have any record of whatsoever thing they tell me. I'm not going to use your information against you. I, since I've been talking, I didn't mention anybody's name that came to me for deliverance. I don't do it. Please, don't use because of shame to go to hell. The Lord is ready to save you. Why will you die? Why will you go to the fire of hell? You, you are doing so much for the kingdom. Why will you die in your sins? Don't say that Jesus Christ is not ready for me. He has no time for me. He is ready for you. Don't, it, let me tell you, how will you feel if Jesus Christ on the last day is crying and asking you in tears that you get out of here, go to the pit of hell, you workers of iniquity. And he is saying this in tears. He doesn't want to lose you, but he, 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 his hands are tied because the time of grace is over. You can't go into the body and start living again and repent of your sins again. How would you feel? It is very, very painful for Jesus to send people to the fire of hell, to the pit, to the bottomless, bottomless pit and not be able to help them. Now the mercy of the Lord is more than able to help you. Don't say you, your sins are too many. God is ready to help you. Please give your life to Jesus Christ. If you can email me at hosannadavid at ymail.com and you can visit our websites eagleiopuna.com and biblicalsexualpurity.com and go to our contact page and contact me. I'm going to respond to you in person. My WhatsApp number is uh, in the description box. You can go to our contact page. It's there. I am going to respond to you and attend to you. Please give your life to Jesus Christ. I know it's a lot of burden on me, but I have to do it because this is the work of my Father in heaven. And we just have to do it. A lot of people are going to hell. I don't want to cry for lost souls. If by God's grace and mercy I make heaven. And I know I am definitely going to make it not by my own power, but by the grace of God. I don't want to go to heaven and start becoming sorrowful or feel bad because I didn't, I didn't do enough. I want to put in all my best because I know there is no repentance after death. Thank you for watching. Please do me a favor. Share this video with someone that needs to repent. Thank you and God bless you. Bye-bye.